Hello everyone, my name is Blaze and welcome to Refraction. This is an official novel about sci-fi and dealing with another version of ourselves inside a parallel world. Let's start up the game. Okay, we're going to select start rather than click start. Okay, let's see what we're dealing with today. The brightest beams of worlds unbounded. Ricocheted before my view. And yet, I come and stay my wonders. Infinity is less than you. By the time I get to the beach, it's already crowded with dozens of other students. It seems like everyone has decided to celebrate Golden Week here. And what is Golden Week? And also, what are these? That's quick save. That's quick load. Um, dialogue... That's load, but the other one is how do we save? Um, okay, they're just different pages. So how do you save? Oh, there we go. That's save. I feel like a jerk as I gin step gingerly between the laid out blankets of other groups. Looking like a loner as I travel by myself. The eye looks like a one, by the way. <laughs> Hurricane! Hey, I look up with visible relief as Yu Chan calls my calls out my name. Waving me over to my group's corner of the beach, I'm able to get a good look at her as I wave through the crowd. It's so strange, even though I've been neighbours with her my entire life. I've never seen her in a swimsuit before. I guess there's a first for everything, isn't there? There's always a first for everything. Oh my gosh, he hugs me tightly as I approach. <laughs> Jump scare material. You made it. I was beginning to worry that you'd gotten lost. I try to control my thoughts as I feel <laughs> her body pressed up against mine. Uh, there's only a thin layer of fabric separating us. C come on, you know better. How many times do I have to come and rescue when we were kids and you got lost in the woods? <laughs> I guess you're right. It's really embarrassing that you'd say something like that out loud, though. Aw, <laughs> and our other friend. Oi, lay off, Hurricane. Stop teasing you, Chan, so much. So, But our name is called Jackie, so I'm not sure where this is going. I turn to see Mio's characteristically sour expression. Very sour expression. She always jumps at a chance to tell me off for something. Luckily, I have a secret weapon at my disposal. Hey there, Mio Chan, that swimsuit looks good on you. Yeah, of course that wouldn't work. <laughs> what? Why would you say something like that, you jerk? You blank. It's not like I like you or anything. It's just uh, <laughs> the pout face. The pout face is just so irresistible. And that blush too. Let's see what's going on here. And another friend, Yuka. Whoa, you've never changed, Hurricane. Please, tell me at least you started your reading assignment before you came here. Uh, why would I start my homework on the first day of vacation? Everyone else is having fun. Hmm, I figured as much. You're never going to get your grades up if you don't put in the effort. Why else did you ask me to tutor you? Because you're our friend. Our smartest friend. How many different characters are there? Oh, give him a break, Yuka-chan. You're such a downer. Summer isn't about homework and school, it's about beaches and swimsuits. Yes, of course it is. Say how we can. What do you think of my swimsuit? It's, um, it's, um, very, um, it doesn't leave much to the imagination, does it? Oh, I see. Stop with those lips. Those lips are giving me shivers. <laughs> how we can is already think. Yeah, of course. Of course you would. Of course you would say that. Of course you would think that. <laughs> I'm not going to read the rest of it out loud. <laughs> you couldn't find a pair more opposite than Yuka and Akari. Which is why it's so weird that they're sisters. Yep. Yuka is so straight-laced and serious. Whereas Akari, well, I happen to know that she's one of those. But she certainly doesn't act like it. For a moment, it's like uh, Ardre from Hoonipop. For a moment, I think we were missing the last member of the group, but then I noticed little Rin sitting on the blanket. Where's Jackie of all places? Hey there. 
Her face, as always, is buried in one of her fantasy novels. I walk over to her and tap her forehead, causing her to lift her gaze in a short, a sort of blank stare. Huh? Ren Chan, I'm here now. Come over here with all of us. We're all having fun. Oh, hello, Horasan. I'm glad that your victor of arrival was not skewered. What? What are you saying about that? Our arrival has never been skewered before. Then her nose goes right back into that book. Well, you can't say I didn't try. Exactly. Oh, I know what we should do. No, Akari. Whatever you're thinking of, just don't do it. How can she decide which one of us has... No! This is not for me to decide! <laughs> just because I'm the anomaly in this group does not mean I have to... Okay. What? I don't care what Harakan thinks of my swimsuit, and I don't want him looking at our bodies like some... No! I'm not one of those, for goodness sakes, how dare you! Oh, come on, Mio, I think it could be fun. Yeah, Harakan, which swimsuit is the best? I guess a small competition wouldn't hurt. Exactly! Even Rin looks to me, seem seeming to be curious about my choice. Alright, how we can tell us, who do you think is the best swimsuit? Is this just like the secret harem ending that we've all dreamt of? Uh, do I really have to select? <laughs> like, this is- oh. This is just- Well then, I'm guessing that is just a dream. <laughs> a dream of our other persona, probably? No, not load, I want to- I want to save. Uh, I don't think you could have selected any of those choices. <laughs> and I'm glad the game took me away from that option because I could not choose between either of the five lovely ladies. Okay, I think that's plenty. Joan! Golden week is over. What? Oh, come on. You barely even played for two minutes. You didn't even make your first choice. I carefully sat the headset down on the stone lip of the fountain next to me. Reaching up to put my long hair back in its proper order. Does it suddenly get interesting once you've picked out which character you think is the hottest? Hottest. And what's of those girls' personalities anyway? Oh, we were playing a game. We was in a dating simulator. And we somehow got mixed in. That was Golden Week. <laughs> Unless there's a Golden Week in our reality as well as well as the game's reality. Oh, those other personalities you see in every dating simulator. Girl next door, the Sundre, the responsible one, the hypersexual one, the one that wants to kill you, called Beandere. Oh, and the last girl is a combo for, okay. And socially lacking tropes, although we did program her into tall. If every one of those games has the same character types, then why does anyone ever play more than one because even though people can have the same kind of traits such as like the sundry trait there's always different individualities between people different experiences that the character has gone through in their life the person that's the point flowers of the sidewalk is a perfect example of a genre's worst of the worst it's so deliciously awful isn't it <laughs> I don't even know which game it is. I roll my eyes, turning towards our other companion. Don't look at me. I told you not to take her up on it. I guess I'll never learn, huh? June just stands there with a big grin on her face as she starts to unplug the tangular cables connecting the VR headset to her laptop. Well, I was going to pull the plug on you all anyway. It's already 20 after. Sheesh, really? I must have been in there longer than I thought. I quickly pull my backpack closer to, and unzip the top, checking to make sure that I've packed all my notebooks before I slean it over my shoulder. We're going to be a couple of minutes late to class. So what? I think the whole point of graduating high school was so that we could be marked tardily anymore. Gee, that's a very irresponsible way of looking at things, okay? You already forgot, didn't you? It's Wednesday. We're starting that new unit. Paul wants to make sure we didn't miss any of it. Oh yeah, the one on Christianity. What's the deal with that anyway, Paul? Shouldn't you already know all that stuff? No. 
Just because I'm Christian doesn't mean that I know everything about my religion's history. Exactly. You always know something new every day. And I'm curious to see how Professor Keen handles the parts I already know. Yes, it seems kind of dubious to me. I mean, we're talking about things that happened thousands of years ago. Question mark. Who can really say what the history really is? It's up to interpretation. I think religion in its own way is healthy as long as it doesn't produce any wars. But politics... There's nothing healthy about politics. Wasn't it you who was lecturing me just a few days ago about how important it is to know Greek mythology to fully appreciate that comic book storyline? That's totally different. Comic books are fictional. Fictional and fantasy. Non-fictional and real. Besides, I didn't say you needed mythology to appreciate it. I said you needed mythology to enjoy how much the writers screwed it up. People can have their own spins on things. June. I've got an idea. Just think of a Bible as fan fiction, and then whenever the professor says that something in it is historically inaccurate, you can have fun hating how wrong it is. Very funny, Jackie. June sticks her tongue out on me and giggles. <laughs> Still fiddling it with fitting all of the different cords in her knapsack, I nod towards the humanities building. Shall we head over then, Paul? After you. After all, ladies first. We pull on our backpack straps and start walking away. Hey, hey! Wait up, jerks! My friends are nothing but jerks! Slow down! F in the comments for poor June. Okay, now we're in the lecture hall. More interesting, of course, are the earliest deadlines. So dates that these records can be verified. I purse my lips and pretend like I'm scratching my head. Doing my best to hide the yawn that I couldn't suppress. I look down at my notebook. There's a very neat unit of Christianity labelled at the top, followed by a few straight laced lines of dates and people. Very important information for the rest of the year and years to come. And even in death, this sort of thing is very important. Then the lines start getting shorter and sloppier. All the way down to where my pencil slipped out of my fingers and made a carved squiggly mark up the side of my paper. When we compare this idea to the one presented by the opposing faction, however, we see a different story being presented. Opposing faction always has a different perspective on things. Usually the contrary. I'm a good student, I promise. I would have made it this far into college if I weren't. Professor Keen just has the right combination of pitch and tone in his voice that makes whatever he says turn into a soft white noise by the time it reaches your ear. He could possibly be describe probably be describing how we'd win we'd all win millions of dollars in the lottery, and I'd have the same attention span. Yes. Until you mention food or break. Then our actually or coffee as well. Then our attention span goes up. <laughs> I look to my left where Paul perches in his seat. His pen flashing across the page from line to line, his eyes never breaking from the lecture as he writes. I never figured out how he manages to do that without smudging the ink. Well, of course, Paul would be interested. June and I both just took this intro into world religions class to fulfill a general education requirement in our majors, but not him. Although he's just a year older than us, this is Paul's first semester at Big Lake University. And the, uh, the bigger brother would be called Big Ocean University. And this class is just the first in a long line towards getting his comparative religions degree. From the day we met, the day we'd been assigned as project partners, that always felt like a weird fit to me. Comparative religions? Then that must mean you also must know or have the desire, actually, and have the desire to know multiple religions because you're comparative about them. Moving on. Paul is from the south of the US, as his accent clearly indicates, and his family is apparently very religious. He's pretty devoted as well. For what I could tell, he doesn't fit the stereotype that I've always had in my head. For one thing, he has a serious fascination with all sorts of religions, to a point that a passerby might mistake him for a Hindu or a Muslim, as he talks about their brief system with that passionate look in his eyes. I turn my eyes to the right, not surprised to see June doodling, some, doodling, doodling, doodling something in her notebook. 
paying about as much attention as I am. She'd have her laptop out and be surfing the internet if Professor Keen hadn't specifically forbidden it her using after an unfortunate incident. And what would that be? Was somebody looking at something they shouldn't have? And by the way, there's laptops on the front row. <laughs> An unfortunate incident because somebody was too impatient to go home and search whatever it is that they were searching for while at home. June has been assigned as a third member of our group, so I've known her about as long as I've known Paul. Like me, she has no interest in this class, only taking it to pass a requirement keeping her from finishing her major in engineering. Well, it's not like she's super into that either. She told me earlier that she doesn't really have a passion for that kind of stuff. So what is the motive behind doing your major degree then? What is the motive? She's just naturally good with numbers and wants a job that can provide her with a reliable income. Okay. I would rather have something that I have a little less money in but I'm really passionate behind rather than something which I'm depressed by but I get a lot of money in. But I think your emotional health is far more important than your um, balance, how many digits you've got in your bank account. Because money doesn't buy you happiness after all. No, if she'd been able to get away with it, she would have majored in something like pop culture appreciation. But that's a very specific thing, pop culture. Well, maybe... Uh, deprecation is a better word for it. If there is one thing that June enjoys more than loving a good comic book, it's having, f it's having fun hating a bad one. She does that with all sorts of genres, but comics are her favourite to love being hateful towards. It was a real stroke of luck to get paired up with these two, and not just because Paul's expertise makes all the assignments a snap to complete together. It's because we're friends. Even though I've met plenty of people in the journalism department at Big Lake University, I never really connected much with any of them. Three years of feeling vaguely lonely, and now suddenly fate has given me two people who I've enjoyed getting to know. I'm not really sure whether that's going to last beyond the end of the semester, but I'm hopeful. The scratching of desk surface has been slid away jolts me from my ravine, and I finally notice that the relaxing drone of Professor Keen's voice has disappeared. Relaxing. Relaxing? A relaxing voice. I quickly pack up my notebook away and follow my friends out of the classroom, hoping that they didn't see me daydream like an idiot. We all need to contribute towards this outcome after the war. So yeah, right now, it's between taking the advanced theory class or sign up for the interning experience. Our world's religions class is the last day for all of us. I wonder if that, there was a choice we could have made out of those five. Like if we clicked one of them fast enough, it would proceed onwards. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's just for our harem fantasies to go wild with. So we usually walk together towards the student apartment complex afterwards. June always seems to have a way of coming up with something interesting to fill the silence. Hmm, sounds like an important choice to make. I mean, not really. That's, a kind, that's kind of what I told my advisor, but I'm probably going to end up taking the internship. Better to get some real life experience than being stuck in a gloomy classroom again, right? But understanding more of the theory can make you more efficient in the workplace, yes. Brain, then physicality. Or, you can do both. Learn it as you're going along. And there's only so far that hypothetical mathematics can take you. Sometimes you just have to get your hands dirty. Well, it's not like it matters in the long run anyways. Oh god, please tell me that you at least have some idea of what kind of job you want to have after graduation. Of course I do. I want a job that pays me sweet, sweet money to buy stuff with, of course. June, okay. <laughs> you know that they don't just pay engineers to exist, right? You've got to make connections, find contacts in certain companies, and... Oh, you worry too much, Jackie. Life's too complicated to plan every little detail ahead of time. But making connections means that you always have a plan B. You've just got to pay attention and grab the opportunities when they appear in front of you. <sighs> I sigh softly, looking over at Paul, who has his head hanging down, deep in thought. By now I'm familiar with that look. He's down a rabbit hole of thinking, and he'll never share what's in his mind unless we ask him about it. 
What are you thinking about, Paul? Hmm, it's nothing. I was just pondering June's comment. Which one? The one about her choice for next semester's, se semester's credits not mattering in the long run. I really don't think that's true. What do you mean? Sure, I'll have a different semester depending on what I do, but either way, I'm probably just going to end up in the same place with the same job. It's your commitment to everything that you're doing. I don't know about that. Maybe in the internship, you would meet someone who would rather you to an employer down the line, letting you land your dream job. She just said that she doesn't have one. Right, I'm speaking hypothetically. <laughs> so you were listening to our conversation. Or maybe there's someone who's planning on taking the advanced theory course. Someone that you would only meet by being in the same class. And maybe you end up falling in love and marrying that person. I doubt it. I've already met just about everyone in the department. Sexy they are not. The point is that your life can go way differently. And hey, and hey, June... Sexy comes in many forms, okay? It's not just the outside, there's also the inside. Life will go many ways differently depending on your choices you make. If you don't think about what you're doing, it can have major consequences down the line. That's why I think that God gave us the ability to choose in the first place. Wait, I thought God was supposed to be only knowing or something like that. Omni knowing. If he already knows everything we're going to do, then what's the point of being able to choose? We choose by ourselves. God might know what we'll do, but we don't. That's the important difference. Well, whatever. Setting aside the frankly terrifying notion of some old man in the sky predicting my every move, you're being a little tr too dramatic for my tastes. I think he is just looking out for you, June. The importance of every little decision is just a lazy narrative tool used by writers who want to give their characters' motives a little more oomph. So, writers as in people who write games and write visual novels. And what you're saying right now is kind of like that same thing, giving it that little bit more oomph. It's stupid to try and apply that device to a real life. Wow, June, tell us how you really feel. Heh, <laughs> at least my opinions are fun to listen to, unlike some people's. Hey, everyone's opinions are fun in their own ways. Um, excluding present company, of course. But I am curious, Jackie. What do you think? Which one of us do you agree with more? Hmm. I would rather go with the more sensible option of... Small choices being a major factor. Paul sm smiles softly. Apparently, please June, of course, speaks right up. Really, Jackie? I thought you'd be more practical than that. I mean, think about where you are right now. If you decided not to come to BLU, you probably would have gone to some other university somewhere else and you'd still be studying journalism. Blue Lake University? No, Big Lake, sorry. In 10 years, you'll probably be working at the same place no matter where you studied. Your university training isn't going to change your career aspirations or what your eventual eventual goals are. I can still think small choices can have a, change, choices can have a big impact. Well, I guess there's no convincing you two. I'll just have to be right to my own. You ass. <laughs> I playfully nudge June with my elbow. We only have to walk a few more steps before June manages to fill the void in our conversation. Oh yeah, did you guys just hear the latest on the scandal? This is a very uh, hitting home kind of story this is. Especially those who have been to university or college themselves, you know, planning and preparing for our future. Everything like that. Even in school, this can kind of be relatable. So it's a very universal understanding. You know I don't like to follow gossip like that, June. Oh, uh, you're going to be far now. Apparently another girl has fined a claim against President Taylor. What has... Sorry, President Tyler. I went softly, looking down at my feet. All the seediest parts of campus are talking about it. The Big Lake University sex schedule. A girl had come forward last year, claimed that she'd been manipulated by the President of the University into performing his... 
favors. After a lengthy investigation, the university has concluded that President, President Taylor it was innocent and that the girl had invented a story in order to extort money from the school. Things like that happen all the time, where you hear a story, but you should not assume either if it's true or false unless evidence comes forward or the lack of evidence comes forward and then the one who is accusing the president or the accused or those who are being accused are therefore not guilty a second girl is now coming forward with a similar story are you referring to the story that happened on campus last year i only read about it in the papers but wasn't the president's name cleared yeah, although there are a few stragglers who are pretty vocal about the scandal just being hushed up, they're probably getting pretty riled up about having another chance to bring Tyler down. Taylor. Most people seem to think it's just a copycat scammer, though. Where have you been hearing... What have you been hearing among the reporters, Jackie? Oh, me? Uh, well, I... I noticed that we've reached a split in the path, and I take the opportunity. Actually, guys, I'm going to head out this way. I want to drop by the store before I get home. Out of groceries, then? No, actually, I decided I want to try something different with my hair. Oh, you should do something terrible with it and say it's ironic. Maybe dye your hair the same ridiculous shade as one of those girls you saw in Flowers of the Sidewalk. You know, Drew, maybe you should do that first since you actually offered up the idea. If you think it's a good idea, then you should perform that yourselves. It's always funnier watching somebody else do it, but when you do it yourself, it's actually embarrassing. Hypothetically, because I'm not a girl. I even... Well, actually, some boys do dye their hair. Anyways, moving on. I don't even think some of the colours actually exist in real life. Do they just go to town on their heads with a paintbrush or something? June laughs bouncing. <clears throat> June's laugh bounces off the nearby buildings as I peel away from the other two and head into a different direction. Yes. And this is I'd risen high enough in the ac academic pecking order to qualify for my own private bedroom. I don't think anyone's really been in here to see it. And that's probably a good thing. If I did have an unexpected guess, I'd probably just spout off the tired phase about knowing where everything was and having my own system. The truth, of course, is that I never bother to take the time clean the place. And I always have to spend at least 10 minutes to find something I don't use every day. That's why you put things in designated places. Even the smallest of rooms can be used very efficiently. Still, I enjoy being here. There's something about a mess that you created yourself that really endears you to it. Because you know you created that mess. If you know somebody else has created a the mess, then you're a little bit more irritated. Hypothetically speaking. I sigh as I gaze at myself in the mirror, brushing some of my hair back behind my ear, I'll pick up the two dye boxes and move into the bathroom. What? It's been a while since I've done anything like this. Not since, well, since high school, probably. Ah. But things are really starting to come to a head now. All the pieces line up in their place. And this is probably where we're going to start seeing our other self. Maybe I just want to do something to prove myself that I am in there. Line up with them. Ready for action. Not the hair dye will actually help in the coming battle. You may never know. Oh, there's two different power levels here, red and blue. So from the other side, it would be blue and red. If June were here, I'm sure I'd be facing down the prospects of every strand of my hair being dyed an insane shade. But I don't need to go crazy here, just a streak of colour in front will be more than enough. I looked down at the two options I'd finalise on in the store. Now, which one should I try? What? What is this? Oh. What is this? What's going on? What is going on? Come on, still. There we go. One of us should be correct. I blink a few times and rub my eyes, but the odd haze around my, the edges of my vision doesn't go away. And I can swear that I hear some sort of faraway music tr tickling my ears. What the hell is this? Try not to panic, I take a few deep breaths. Think, damn it. This happened just when I was about to make a decision. So maybe I'll stop hallucinating if I choose something. Well, go with 
well, either one makes into, well, both are making into purple, so I can't choose. Uh, we'll go with red. Oh, is that it? The hallucinations seem to, hallucinations seem to have faded away now. But what the hell was that anyway? I've never experienced anything like that before in my life. Is the pressure starting to get to me? Maybe I need to focus on getting us on more sleep at night. Are you sure about that? Sure about that. I wander back into my room and look around, searching for anything out of the ordinary. The knock on my door is quiet and polite, but it still causes me to gasp and jump a bit in my chair. Jesus! Miss Shields, I seem to have prepared too much food again. Any chance you'd like some of the leftovers? Nah, no, Ivana, not tonight. I've got somewhere I need to be, but thank you. I place a hand on my heart, taking a few deep breaths, then glance at my phone. I don't have time to be confused right now. Tonight's meeting is too important to be late to. After checking to make sure that the dye is dried, I grab my writing bag and head out the door. I don't know, we could always eat it while we're going to the interview room. I'm typically one of the first people to make it here, but the dye job and the weird experience I had in my apartment had delayed me. Oh, there you are, Jacqueline. I was starting to worry. No need to worry, schnazzies. And it's Jackie, remember. Ah, yes. Right. Yes, sorry, Jackie. And you might as well just use shields while you're at it. Reporters usually stick to last names only. Oh, man. Really? Oh, I'm super sorry, J Shields. I guess I haven't ta taken my class yet. What have we got here? Oh, leave the poor boy alone, Jackie. You really shouldn't take advantage of him like that. Exactly. Look at how blush for he is. <laughs> sorry, sorry, you're right. I'm just teasing, Mitch. You can call me Jackie. Oh, uh, I guess you got me again. I grin, sitting, setting my bag on a nearby table and taking a seat. I really should be acting my age, but I almost can't help it. It's, there's no problem at all acting like a child at times. We've all got to be a little bit of a child at times, otherwise, well, our sanity will go away. Despite being in his second year of college, this Latinx student always draws out of the older sister in me. Maybe I'm just projecting all that teasing that I could have used on my siblings if I had any when I was growing up. So you're either an only child or the youngest child. Okay, maybe you are the only child because it says, if I had any. <laughs> so, did I miss anything? Nah, we were just shooting the blank for a bit. I'm not really the one you're supposed to be asking though, right? I went softly, turning my head down to the end of the table. A guy is sitting there, head bowed with his number two yellow pencil moving across a big sheet of white paper he's staring at. It's hard to comprehend how easy it is to miss him as your eyes move around the room. It's not like he's camouflaged or anything like that, he just seems to have an aura that makes your brain toss out the information about him. Sort of like seeing a chair or a window that you've seen a million times before. What, you're just saying that this man is part of the room itself? He is a piece of furniture. <laughs> I can never remember his name. Pete or Steve or something like that. Hey, um, do you have any notes for me? He just looks up at me with a faraway stare, shakes his head, then returns to his note taking. He may look unfocused, but he's probably the best organizer and note taker in the department. That's probably why most people just refer to him as the secretary. He likes writes up agendas and minutes. He's never seemed to mind the moniker. By the way, I love the dye job. Not overly obstinctious, but a very nice highlight to the rest of your complex complexion, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right, what Gas said. It looks really nice. Unoriginal. Aw, you guys are too sweet. It's just something I did on the spa for a moment. You're not going to tell about your hallucinations, both of them? Anyways, I think it's time to get down to business. Yes, of course. The four of us gather together around the table, a chill seeming to pass through the air as we pull out the materials. Despite any differences we might have, we all see, we're all here for the same reason. We're journalist students on the trail of something big. Mitch, why have you been hearing in the community? The kid jumps as I've suddenly called on him in the class. Alright, yes. It is about as we predicted. 
Sydney's story is being passed around almost everywhere, but as far as I can tell, it's mostly as idle gossip. Not many people are taking this as seriously as the first accusation. Yet figures, everyone backs the rich man in power, like usual, because they have money, because they have prospects and advantages that others can have if they side with them. Well, the giving part is hypothetically. It's only human nature, really. Sure, there are people out there who have hate, well, who would hate any story that painted a white man in a bad light, but I think most are just too fresh off of the last accusation to be called a hoax. Once a narrative has been accepted, it's hard to change the precedence. But it wasn't a hoax. You know that. Betty Fuse was blackmailed by President Taylor. Yes, of course, I know that. But if we're going to turn this social conscious around, it's going to take more than just some new claims. We'll need for hard evidence to back it up. I nod my head, taking a few slow breaths. I sometimes hate Gas for how dispassionately he can talk and act. But he's right. There's no point in me getting worked up right now. For I don't really look up to him as a mentor. Um, yeah. I was about to say a, uh, something else beginning with him. Mentor manager. That's one. It's hard to deny that he has more experience than the rest of us. Plus, his position as a grad student in the journalism department gives him the chance to give us resources for our investigation that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Yes, undergraduates and graduates are two different ball games. Although that usually just extends to scheduling power, like this room that he's found for us to use. I managed to find room for some of my uh, pr group projects, just uh, going onto the university's website and being able to book a room for a few hours that we can all use. Usually I just want to book rooms like this where it's kind of like, it's chill, it's quiet, it's out of the way from the usual mob. Well, either way, we don't have a lot of time. My investigation plan relied on Taylor letting his guard down. Now that Sydney suddenly made her accusation public, he's going to be wary again. We need to get those photos before he's spooked enough to destroy them all. What photos? Noted. But it's not like we could just walk in there and ask for them, you know. You just leave that to me. We're going to get our hands on that evidence one way or another. But what's the plan to do that? But wait, so you're going to just steal the photos from him? Isn't that, you know, illegal? Sometimes a reporter has to do a small wrong thing so that she can accomplish a big right and bring about justice. Oh god, you've been practicing that one in the mirror, haven't you? <laughs> Don't listen to him, Jackie. That was such a cool thing to say. I chuckle softly, turning my eyes towards the nearby window. Hmm, across the pathway I can see the lights of the administration building piercing through the night's darkness. The university president's office is a few floors down and a bit to the left, but the window is currently dark, save for some faint emergency lighting. I don't have any proof that he's keeping the photos in there, just a hunch. A hunch that comes from a year of learning about the man named Anton Taylor, a man who likes to keep the source of his power close by. The fingers on my left hand reach over absent-mindedly stroking a small raised string of skin on my right wrist. It's not just one girl, it's not just two, five students now, five people, men and women, all of whom were in a vulnerable situation and could have been kicked out of university with the right exchange of paperwork. Taylor had called them each into his office, threatened them with his authority if they didn't keep quiet and do what he said, and made them perform acts, which he took pictures of. He's a sneaky, sly one, and he's already managed to convince the world that he's innocent. But not to me. I've talked to the victims. I know what he did. And I'm not about to let this story slip out of my grasp. I'm a reporter. And it's my job to get the truth out in the open so that justice can come about. And I will get that justice, whatever it takes. I 
justified voice there. The rest of the meeting is just logistical. We'll talk about what each of us can do in preparation, and I promise them that I'll have an action plan soon. Now I just have to come up with one, which is the actual hard part. <laughs> I sit up, turn my overheated pillow over to the cool side before laying down again. I'm exhausted. As usual, keeping up with college courses is hard enough as it is. Spearheading a secret investigation to the president of my own university takes a lot of energy and concentration, most of which I already cannot spare. Sometimes I wish I could talk to other people besides my reporting team about this. Someone like... Someone like... Well... Paul would go against the grain and would think that our idea would be more... Um, more stupid and intrusive but at the same time Paul could also see the situation as like a fight for good like does justice serve in a religious prospect whereas with June would she would be all sarcastic about it would be like no there's no way you could pull that off hmm. we'll go with Paul Paul takes his time to think about every angle before he makes a decision I'm sure that his calm attitude would be able to see things that I'd miss in my haste to bring President Taylor down. And once he was convinced a man really had committed misconduct, he'd probably want just as much as I want to. I would do. But I can't tell either of my friends. Not yet. Not without an action plan. I've still only known them for a few months and my team needs to minimise the chances that Taylor will catch on to our investigative scheme. Maybe once all of this is over, I can talk to him about what I've been doing and how sorry I am for leaving them out of it. I guess I'm still getting used to having close friends. The cool cushion around my head is enough to bring my fatigue to the surface. And that's the thing about these kind of things. The, oh, someone's had a means of friend. Um, it's lovely to have close friends and friends you can just say hi to. Like, it's really important to have that close circle and... In my time, in my years of doing YouTube Let's Plays and stuff like that on so many different games, I kind of built myself a close circle with people that I now consider friends. I close my eyes, and also university as well, I keep in contact with people every so often. I close my eyes expecting to find the normally uneventful embrace of sleep. But... But the feeling of particles rushing around my body causes me to open my eyes again and then open them wider. What of all this matrix around us? Like, this is the sort of thing that you would see, like, in every opening of a matrix film. What the hell? <laughs> I've got to be dreaming. This is far too flashy to be my bedroom. I feel like I've delved into a sci fi movie screen just as the heroes hit the warp drive. <laughs> Are you talking about Star Wars there when it comes to the warp drive? <laughs> Nothing around me has any sort of meaning or interpretation for me. All I know is that it feels like I'm traveling very, very fast through an unknown landscape in space. The rush of something large brushes past me. What on earth was that? Causing me to spin around in the air. Everything is going too fast for me to catch a glimpse of it. Just when I'm starting to worry that this is one of those dreams that you can't wake yourself up from. My velocity seems to diminish. And the lights around me get brighter. Before fading away. Leaving me again unaware in the darkness of sleep. Oh gosh we're being warped in. We're being warped into the dream. Day 2. Oh, let's see. A terrible die job. Ugh, I hate that ringtone. Are we going to ring up and realize our hair is blue? I blurrily reach my hand out of a mess of cracks and sheets, grabbing my phone and hitting the snooze button on my alarm app. I can't count the number of times I've pounded my screen in a, f in a fit of exhausted rage to change the alarm sound to be something more soothing. That's why you have something that's annoying as an alarm clock or something as something as annoying as a ringtone. It is an incentive for you then to then answer it or get up. <laughs> like if you put a really, really annoying ringtone on an alarm clock that is away from your bed, 
it allows you to wake up. Like, I know that sounds very counter... counter sanity-wise, but I don't know, it could be effective. I need to change it back later when I remember that a grating noise is the only thing that wakes me up on time. I grind my brain into gear as I pull myself out of bed and start to get dressed. Let's see. Ah, yes, I've only got my morning classes today. Even though we don't have our shared credits on Tuesdays and Thursdays, June Paul and I have got into the habit of getting together anyway. It's theoretically a chance for us to study and go over whatever group projects we're supposed to be working on. But we've typically spent the time chatting and hanging out. It's not like the class is that difficult. I scratch my head a bit, yawning and stretching my arms behind my back. I don't really know why, but I feel a bit off right now, like an essay with its paragraph switched around. Maybe it's because of that crazy dream I had last night. Maybe you should look in the mirror and see if there's anything different. The sensation of flying through an alien airspace is so vivid that it makes my skin prickle. I don't remember ever having a dream quite like that before. Maybe the stress from the present Taylor story is getting to me. Tyler, Taylor. I check my phone again, softly cursing under my breath as I see the time I've wasted just standing around. I quickly dart into the bathroom to get started on my routine. When my classes are done, I'm the first one to make it to our dedicated meeting spot. Setting my bag on the ground, I plop my butt onto the bench next to the fountain and sigh, glancing around idly. I still cannot put my finger on it, but something really seems weird to me today, and the thing that bothers me the most about it is the sense that no one else seems to notice it but me. My classes, for instance, everything that is what I expected, at least on the surface. My professors are giving the same lesson, all my classmates are the same, and sitting in the same seats, and the rooms are exactly the same as they did yesterday. And yet, I could have sworn that the girl sitting in front of me has had a yellow knapsack all semester, but today it's more, it looks more orange than anything else. The graffiti that I usually saw on my desk before sitting down on my notebook has been wiped clean before I got there. And I'm sure that the topic of a discussion in modern journalism was one we went out, sorry, we went over last week, but no one else seemed upset that we're basically doing a rerun. I sigh again, rubbing my temples. Who knows? Maybe I'm just overreacting. Maybe there is some sort of duplication going on here. Doppelganger. Another realm. Wake up on the wrong side of a bed. Had me... <laughs> had made me feel out of place and I'm just oversensitive to things lined up with the confusion I'm feeling. How many times have I heard one of my teachers caution us against reporting with expectations? If you don't commit to being unbiased from the start, you subconsciously infuse your writing with a pre preference for one argument over another. Although that isn't unnecessarily always a bad thing, an image of President Taylor's face pops into my head, and I frown a bit. Thankfully, a much more pleasant-looking face pops in to distract me. Hey, Jacqueline! No, it's Jackie. Why the glum look? You look like you just walked out of a bad Shyamalan film, or I guess maybe a good Shyamalan film. As usual, I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. You really should try talking about things that you hate. There's nothing quite so carfetic as complaining about fictional universes you don't have to live in. Anyway, notice anything different about me? No. Um... Uh, yeah, okay, I think we're going to bring this about on the next time, folks. We're going to answer this question in the next time. Yeah, I think the first option is more conclusive and confident than the second one. Because the second one looks like it's just a random guess. So, thank you all so much for watching, guys. I'm eager to get back into refraction in the next time. This is all that there's going to be for this video. Stay tuned for part two as we will answer this question. Did we notice that her hair has changed? Or did we notice that her eyes are now green? Actually, just to, um, just to clarify, let's load back into this one. Affirmative. 
yeah, her eyes are green. But maybe that is the consequence of going into the other universe. But thank you all so much for watching, guys. Let's see, her hair. Is there anything different about her hair? Um, we can't really tell from this angle. But thank you all so much for watching, guys. And see you all in the next time with a fraction. There is a link down in the description below where you can purchase this game for yourselves. And enjoy these sci-fi alternative universe adventures. Adventures. Endeavors. Have a lovely day and take care of yourselves.